don't have five plus years of experience, don't have advanced knowledge on a program, tough. You'll never work in the industry. Hey guys, it's Tadeka Kapatua, and today I'd like to talk about how I feel about animation job applications in general. Animation work, whether it's 2D animation, 3D animation, storyboarding, design, viz dev, these are all highly specialized skill sets that require a lot of people to have a good grasp in their overall fundamentals. 2D animation, for example, requires solid drawing skills, but a good grasp on performance, choreography, acting, and staging. Storyboarding requires knowledge on cutting, editing, timing, shot composition, camera angles, staging, as well as many other filmmaking languages. These alone should be simple qualifiers to get studio work or to be eligible for studio work. In the past, there were studios more willing to take in inexperienced artists or artists who have never animated before for an animation position. Especially in the 80s, the culture of mentorship, artistic development, and training was far more common in the past. I mean, could you imagine a studio like Ghibli back in the late 80s to the early 90s requesting people with little to no experience to work in their anime productions? So what about nowadays? What about the modern world? I mean, sure, some of these major studios do have a talent development, a trainee or internship programs, and they cut it off to students only, or if you're at a certain age range. Nowadays, there's just a lot of people in the industry. There's a lot of artists, so the competition pool is also quite high. There's also high demand for great content, movies, or TV shows, and it's all happening at breakneck speeds. There's always a new show within a week. You know, the streaming wars. Studios and productions are always looking for some of the best artists to make some great content for their platform. And mind you, there's a lot more artists in the industry now, and there's higher expectations as time goes by. So the expectations of skill sets have also increased, or they're demanding more. But what if it's a little more than just skill sets? And I'll get to that soon. There's no doubt that students coming out from an animation school or students coming into the animation industry, they're getting better and better over time. You can tell from some of their student films, from their work, and just from the expectations of these schools. There's way more teenagers jumping into the animation industry starting their experience with an anime work. So it's common sense that most of these job applications for animation and art look for people who can deliver these standards, such as believable performance, good staging, good design, high standards, and the best of the best. And that should be enough, right, to qualify for an application? Well, what if they ask for great in-depth knowledge of a certain industry-grade software that is out of reach for students or someone that is jobless? Industry program licenses are not cheap. A job application might ask for people who have five plus years of studio work. I've seen some job applications look for people of a certain race, gender, or sexual orientation of an applicant, which I personally think is inappropriate, but I understand why it happens. I'm a person of color myself, and I have a lot of opinions about this. And sometimes I've seen applications, not necessarily job applications, but volunteer work projects, and they're only looking for artists who are willing to do free work, but expecting high standards or high demand. So there's this really crappy catch-22. How can someone who is new and green to the industry gain experience when a lot of these applications can only look for people with a couple of years under their belt and to already have experience with industry-grade software? And why some of these students really look for internship or training positions to hopefully put their foot within the industry. So I did have this experience myself. When I applied for a show at Disney TV, they turned me down because at the time I only had two years of total storyboarding experience with most of it being feature animation experience and they were looking for people with more TV experience. They didn't bother giving me a test. They just said, why don't you try doing a story revisionist role, which is an entry level position. I'm personally not against doing something like that, but I could not afford it at the time. It means a pay cut. And of course, that would complicate my visa situation. And maybe at that time, or maybe they were in a circumstance where they could only look for story artists who could just deliver the work instantly. As a new student or someone green in the industry, how can you gain experience when studios are not willing to give those experiences to new timers? How can you have software experiences when those licenses cost so much? I mean, it makes sense why many students would choose to pirate industry level software or get a really good student discount deal. 
Does this mean that you should give up animation work and just look at another field? Here's what I have to say based on my experience. One of the reasons why I got into production was not really because of my story portfolio. You know, when I talked to my directors and supervisors about this, they said they brought me in because of my personal projects or things that I've worked outside of industry work. When I was still a student, I applied for the animation internship for Pixar Animation Studios. I got rejected, but then I finished my student film Tiny Nomad, it showed in a producer show, and four days after that screening, I get a phone call from Pixar saying they are interested in me even though they already said no to me. I brought that up and they said, well, yeah, we said no, but the supervisor saw your film and we'd like to give you a chance. I turned it down because I already accepted an offer from DreamWorks Animation. And boy, oh boy, did Pixar resend my rejection letter. Although my student film wasn't really a personal project, it feels like a personal project to me. And that's why I highly encourage you guys to keep investing in your own personal projects. There's going to be a lot of story artists who can do exactly what you do as a storyboard artist, but there's not a lot of people like you, and personal projects can help reflect that. I was a part of a miniseries called Pig the Dam Keeper Poems, and the reason that they brought me in was because I make short films on my own. I know how to start something and end it. Alright, let's say you don't have any personal work, but let's say you have a badass demo reel or a badass portfolio for whatever position. There's really two things that can happen. One is that they reject you because they're really adamant about their requirements, such as software and career experience. The other path is that they like your work, they see you got skills, and then they're willing to give you a chance. And these chances could look like they're willing to offer you freelance work before they consider you full time. Or like many other productions, they give you a test to see if you can fit in with the style of the production. And then there are other ones where they can bring you in as a mentee, an intern, a trainee. You just have to be careful with those because that's when they can probably take advantage of you. And for many, this could be your first experience. This could be your first time putting your foot in the industry so you can lay a groundwork, make connections, start building new work for your portfolio. And let's talk about your CV or resume. Let's say you don't have any animation industry experience, but what other experiences do you have? Maybe you worked in retail, maybe you worked as a barista, maybe you worked in other services. Put that down because it shows that you have worked in a workplace environment. You can even put projects that you've been involved with in your resume, such as volunteer work, collaborations, or maybe your own personal projects, and describe what roles you had for each of them. Anything significant is better than nothing. Okay, let's talk about software, and software is debatable when it comes to job applications. When it's a very skill-oriented job, I don't think software should matter as much because software can easily be picked up when you already have your skills and foundation down. You could just stick to one software and be a really, really good animator, good hand-drawn traditional style animator. You've only worked in a program like Clip Studio, and you have to learn how to animate in Harmony. Sure, it might take time to learn a new program, but a lot of the terminology, the technique, and the practice of animation should transfer over. When I got hired as a storyboard artist at DreamWorks Animation, I never boarded in Photoshop, which was a requirement for feature boarding in DreamWorks Feature Animation. Most of my storyboard work and the story test that I submitted at the time, they were all done in Adobe Flash, or also known as Adobe Animate. I didn't start boarding in Photoshop until I got hired into DreamWorks, and that's where I picked up boarding in Photoshop and the Flick system that they were using at the time. Also, productions are willing to compromise with the artist with whatever software the artist wants to use, as long as they turn in their work in the appropriate format. The last production I was in, there were storyboard artists using different programs. One boarded in TV Paint, another boarded in Storyboard Pro, and I was boarding in Photoshop at the time. This also counts for anime work too. Even though most anime studios use Clip Studio, I know a lot of animators that use Adobe Animate, TV Paint, and Toon Boom Harmony, and they just deliver the drawings in the appropriate format that they're asking for. My buddy Nicholas Cole does concept art for video games. He just uses his iPad and Procreate. That's it. As long as you can do the work, you can turn in the work, you can turn in in the appropriate format that they're asking for, it's still doable. And if you have your foundations and skills down, you can easily pick up a new software. When it comes to these job applications, don't let these high standards scare you from even applying. A good job application will look for the type of work they expect out of people, and then prioritize other things like experience and software later on. Unless, again, it's a really specific software-related job or a supervision role. 
Now, as far as applications looking for a specific gender, sexual orientation, or race, that's something that I'll have to share my thoughts in another video. I see why it happens. I can understand why it happens. Some points I agree with, some points I highly disagree with. If your portfolio and reel is amazing and you have some great personal work under your belt, that should be enough to give you a chance. Anyways, that's all. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.